Now, with a 2017 budget clocking in at a record 3.35 trillion pesos and an investment over 2 trillion pesos in infrastructure and human capital development over the next six years of office, let alone the promise of lowering income taxes, all eyeballs are now moving toward the big question, how are we going to pay for it? Now, to talk about the revenue side of the equation and how the proposed reforms stack up, is Mon Abrea. He's a president of Abrea Consulting and a former 10 Outstanding Young Man awardee. Congratulations. Former, I, I, I appear so old already. <laughs> no, no, and, and an HCC awardee, by the yeah. way. Thanks for joining us on the show. Now, talk about this uh, new externality coming to us. Mm. We have, for example, oil prices going up mm. at $54 a barrel. There's pressure right now in terms of adjusting the excise taxes on Congress for the tax mm. reform package. What's your view on that? I think there's really a need to impose excise taxes on the, uh, on uh, fuel, on automobile, etc. But the government has to be careful because if they don't address smuggling, then it ends up burdening those who are legitimately making their business and paying their taxes. Now, how do you calibrate that given the fact that, look, I mean, if you had the package as it is right mm -hmm. now, CTRP package one is equivalent to 174 billion pesos in terms of estimated revenues, mm -hmm. which would likely go down significantly if you didn't fix, if right. you if you reduce that excise tax package here. Actually, the uh, package one can be supported by an administrative reform, which is not uh, being discussed thoroughly. We need to make BIR more efficient, like broadening the taxpayer base, making the audit Based and computerized. So now, I know we have some graphs here of all the figures itself, mm -hmm. but you're saying that the low hanging fruit right now is Correct. the administrative reform. We have to make sure that we, we, we don't burden those who are already paying. Okay. Well, look, the, the tax reform package in Congress, how would you think that needs further adjustment? I mean, it's still going to go mm -hmm. through two houses of Congress, mm -hmm. let alone a bicameral conference Correct. committee. Which parts do you think need adjustments to make it not only more competitive, but more equitable? Um, I think what we, what we need to consider is not just the lowering of income tax, but making sure that it will be offset by broadening the base and collecting from those who should be paying. Like uh, the, the ultra-rich is not exactly encouraging because you, you put a threshold at 5 million, so people will be declaring below 5 million. Yeah, so you, you've got a shrinking base there. <laughs> relative to, to so you, even if you have 10 million taxpayer, if only less than 1 million will declare above half a million, then you're not making collection uh, enough to cover the uh, budget required by the government. Well, certainly base is a question of argument. It's a number of, uh, issue of numbers as well. But I think there's a chart we have here in terms of the asset and tax mm -hmm. rates. Uh, look, income ta personal income tax levels, I mean, we're still competitive versus Thailand and Vietnam, mm -hmm. but it's where the corporate income taxes are. These are the big Correct. taxpayers, easier to fit in the net for a tax man. You were a former BIR examiner. Tell us about this drop here. Do you think it's feasible in terms of getting us competitive? I mean, certainly an easy question, but how do you offset that now if excise taxes are in question? Actually, the first issue there is the bracket creep. We have to really adjust it to make sure that um, the, the employees in particular will not really be burdened by a higher rate at 32%. But the proposed rate at 25%, which is the ceiling, is actually the average of all the ASEAN uh, taxes, which will really make us more competitive given that we don't even need incentives if we we'll make the rates competitive. Honestly. So rates alone and consistency of policy. Now, one, one thing we look at as inconsistent is the tax efficiency or the revenue to GDP right. ratio. We have a chart here and I was proud enough to compute basically all administrations, not just the years, okay. depending on the administration. You've got uh, President Noy Noy's mother here, okay. Aquino One here at 14% of GDP. Mm. Ramos at its highest. I even spoke to <laughs> Undersecretary, former mm. Undersecretary Nene Guevara to say this is the highest thanks to her and Lee Y.Y. Chato, the former BI our commissioner. Now, Australia, even in a strong truncated term was at 15% and this mm. was already after the financial crisis but then it went down and uh, President Noi Noi Kino had brought it up just by you know around two percentage points how did you get it back up to here or higher than that you think in terms of administrative reforms alone if you will ask me I think if we can collect more of that if we can really make uh, control the the declaration if you can make the POS online or real time then BIR need not do audit and we can increase the VAT from 20% contribution right now to Roughly 40%. Is it a question of ease of administration? Because this is a point of sale tax, mm -hmm. basically, a consumption mm -hmm. tax, which is across mm -hmm. the board. Is that the, the reason why you can collect more? Well, um, when it comes to VAT, it's not the ease of administration. It's really computerizing it, making sure that there's no human intervention or the big guys can't uh, uh, bribe the BIR examiners because it's already online, so you cannot manipulate the figures. So technology applying that and also being it's a, it's a flat tax consumption across all, right. it looks like a thing worth considering. And since Congress hasn't done anything about it yet, perhaps you should be testifying in Congress soon. Actually, we have to put a pressure on Congress because this emanates in Congress. Senate can all talk about it, but unless Congress files that bill, remember the package has not yet been filed as a bill. I'm sure Joey, Salce I'm sure Joey Salceda and, and, and company would love to hear from you. Appreciate yeah. your, your time and your insights. Mona Brave of Brea Consulting. You.